What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Monster Slayers, a deck building roguelike adventure. A while back you might recall I played a game like Coin Crypt, or a game called Coin Crypt anyways. This game is very, very similar, except that I actually think it's a better game. It's got better production values, it's got a little bit more depth, and so if you like building card decks, but you wanted like a single player game that relies on card mechanics, this is a pretty good game, which relies on, you know, card economy and mana economy and all that kind of stuff, and so it might wet your whistle a little bit. Let's check it out, yeah? So, more recruits for our guild. Sigh, we have too many already. Everybody wants to join the Monster Slayers Guild these days. Send them to the Northern Valley and have them report to the guild masters there. Let's hope they're quick learners. They're about to be thrown into the deep end. Select Chucked. Your character. So, we gotta select our character. Uh, the Rogue is basically playing the game on easy mode. Uh, the Ranger I haven't played yet, but I have done the Knight, the Barbarian, the Cleric, and the Wizard. I personally like the knight the best. I think the knight is in fact the character that matches up with my play style. So the knight is all about card denial, he's all about punishing your enemies for doing all kinds of stuff. Basically, he punishes magic very heavily and he uses a lot of defensive cards to just kind of whittle away at the enemy and force them to die on your shield wall. Uh, the barbarian can trade his health to do tons of damage. The cleric has a lot of healing. Wasn't a big fan of the cleric though. Used too many dots and damage over time abilities. Uh, the wizard just nukes. Straight nukes. All day long. N-O-O-K-Z. Nukes. Those lead-ass nukes. We're gonna go with the knight, just so I can show you guys. Uh, this is Stoneworm the knight. That's not the best name. Stoneworm, I don't think we're gonna go with. Instead, we'll go with Wormwall, which is still a shitty name, but at least it's alliterative. At least it's alliterative. He will be... I don't know. We'll make him like... There we go. That looks good. Yep, that seems about right. And then we'll just give him kind of like a short hairstyle. My spell books are ready. That sounds all right. I don't really mind that much, but there is some customization you can do in here with each of your heroes. Every time you die, you start over, and you get to redo this process if you want. So by the time I played the game for like an hour or two, I was already just like randomizing them real fast and just jumping straight back in because I wanted to play more. Centuries ago, strange meteorites rained from the skies, shattering into crystal shards wherever they landed. These shards were harvested and studied and formed the basis of magic in the Empire. One such meteorite landed in the northern valley, creating the dead forest and the crystal caves around its point of impact. You have been sent into the valley as your initiation into the Monster Slayer's Guild. Your quest is simple enough, but easier said than done. Slay three legendary monsters and return as true Monster Slayers. Hooray! Well, we don't really want to do the tutorial, so I'm going to do the tutorial real fast and... Cool! So now the tutorial's out of the way. I went back and played through it real fast. Uh, this is the world map, and you've got to complete each of these dungeons before you can go on to later challenges. On this map, we've got our fame. As we get more fame, we actually get passive level ups and things like that that we can give to our characters. They gave me some free fame as a result of the tutorial, and I used it to get free health potions 20% of the time after battles, because I find that that really helps you keep the freight train chugga 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 moving. We also have an inventory which has two items, a blessed ring which gives you more damage against the undead and four HP, and a helm of the worm which gives you two extra HP. So I'm gonna put on, oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm gonna put on my Helm of the Worm, which actually goes on my character, how legit is that? And then I'm gonna put on the ring as well, because everything you can add to your character in this game is helpful. And you do want to do that, because you keep your items. When this character dies, these items will go back into the stash, so that when you start new characters, you've got a bigger pool of items to find. In addition, the stuff you buy with your fame stays, and it gives you things like increased HP per level, stuff like that. Uh, cards in our deck right now, a whole bunch of attack cards, improvisation, defensive cards, life drain. I'll explain how those work in just a minute once we start playing. The background magic radiating from the Crystal Caverns has turned this forest into a deadly place to be. Let's go to the dead forest. Sounds good to me. How busy is it here? Hella dead. Uh, the first thing that we want to do when we go into a dungeon is we got to pick a companion. Somebody that's going to be on our this. side. They'll give you an ability that you can use like every two to three battles. Uh, we can do Thief. And so the Thief will give us ten coins every three battles. Or we can go with the Druid, who will give us a heal, which we can use every three battles. This is actually a tough choice, because coin is really good in this game, but so is healing, especially with a character who probably won't have access to a lot of it. I'm going to take the coins, though. I'm going to take the risky option. One is definitely the safe option. One is definitely the risky option. I'm going to take the risky one. Her name is Waterstaff. Hooray. Does she water your staff? Does her staff... Is it made of right, water? You know Nobody do. knows. There's confusion. So at the beginning of every fight, you can choose to reshuffle your hand and get completely different cards, or you can just start the battle. This is a pretty solid hand, and so I'm going to stick with it. Uh, we've got three cards in our hand right now. We've got an attack card. Damage values are rated right here. Actually, the value of the card is rated right here. I'm going to use that at the outset, too, because I want my 10 coins. That would be one you want to use on cooldown as frequently as possible. So 
This is the value of whatever the card does. If it's a defensive card, it puts a shield for this amount on you. If it's an attack card, it deals that much damage. In this little center area is the AP cost of whatever you do. We have AP, HP, and mana. Mana is for spells. AP is for physical stuff. Our card has 14 decks, or our deck has 14 cards inside of it. Our discard pile is right there. That's how many cards he has in his hand. Any effects that are on his character, any effects that are on my character. Good enough, I just summarized the tutorial. So we're going to attack on this turn. It doesn't cost us anything. It's a freebie, and so he's hit for five. We've got a bonus right there because we're strong against the undead. I'm going to play Improvise, which gives us three options. We can have a shield for seven on ourselves. We can get three action points, or we can get attack. I find that these two are not nearly as useful as taking the shield. I take the shield pretty frequently. With two APs left, we can get four AP and one card or two cards. I'm going to get the two cards because I figured something like that would happen right there. We've got an attack card, so there's another four damage out. We've got a defense card, which raises our shield up to nine and allows us to draw another card. And then we've got another defense card right there, and we've got Concentrate. This is a pretty good for, as far as card economy goes, we killed it on that turn. Wow, we put eight into our discard. We used over half of our deck in that one turn. He's attacked us for three. He's attacked us for three. I don't like that. You could take it from me. He's hit us with Pummel, which forces us to discard a card. We've got Life Drain right now, which does six damage and gives us a little bit of health back. We've got a seven damage attack right there. I'm going to play them both. He's going to go down. Shazoom. And you have defeated an undead knight. We get five XP and three coins. When you level up, you get to upgrade various aspects of your character. I'm going to go talk to the captain real fast. You can click on areas on the map if you've played Darkest Dungeon or really a whole bunch of other games. You'll understand. So with the guard captain on patrol, she can give us three permanent starting APs. She can upgrade a card for us, or we can come back later once we've made up our mind and we have our deck better filled out. I'm going to upgrade three starting APs pretty good. The problem there is going to be our hand economy. We're going to run out of cards before we can use six AP. I know it, so I'm going to upgrade a card. I'm going to take a life drain, and I'm going to bump that up to level two. So now it's going to do 12 damage and heal us for 10 rather than doing six and healing for five. We've only got two options right here. We can fight an undead ranger. Or we can go after a skeletal mage, a mage that has not gotten enough food lately. Here we go. I'm going to go after the level two because this game actually is pretty vicious. The AI will play its cards smart and it will kill you. So watch out for that. I like that hand. That hand is fairly average. I'm going to take that right there. We've got 10 damage worth right there. So I'm just going to throw that out right now. Here it goes. There it is, so 13 damage done. Off Improvisation, I'm going to stack a shield for up to 9. That's denoted on the side of my character right there. And we're going to wait for stuff to happen. Shooting arrows at me, what a dick move. I don't like that, but I got a baller helmet. All right, so we took a little bit of damage right there. We've got Concentrate. I'm going to heal the 6 HP that we've lost. Deal 10 damage, and that's our turn. He's got Dodge. That's going to give him like a 30 or 20% chance to dodge us whenever we try to attack him and cancel out our card. It sucks. But it's going to happen from time to time. Two choices what you can do here. You can go full bore after him and just hope you don't get dodged. Or you can save your hand for next turn. Uh, it doesn't recycle your hand if you don't use the objects in it. If your hand is empty, it'll give you a brand new hand at the beginning of your next turn. Anything you keep in your hand, though, stays unless the enemy forces you to discard it. Well, there you go. With a big old critical hit right there. I love the animation. It looks really good. Like when the enemies die and whatnot, the screen does not use up all the screen space. And so it kind of looks like a mobile game to me, but it's a good game. It's actually an enjoyable title. I had a lot of fun with it. In fact, I sat down last night with it around 11 o'clock and at 2 a.m. I was like, oh shit, I got to go to bed. Well, we defeated the ranger. We get 10 XP. There's the health potion thing from the talent that I got. It's pretty good. On our level up, we can either upgrade a card. We can find an item or we can take one of these two cards right here. Dissipate is really good. Dissipate cancels the next magic card. You're, as long as Dissipate is in your hand, your opponent cannot cast a magic spell without taking five damage. It forces you to discard the Dissipate when he casts the spell, but I've really whittled enemies down with Dissipate. The other option that's tempting to me is to upgrade a card. Health Vial is cool, except that once you use it, it falls out of your deck forever. You don't actually discard it. It is deleted from your deck after you use it. I don't like cards like that. This is too big of an upgrade to have something like that happen. That's a Dissipate level 1, though, which is not that good. So I'm going to take the card upgrade, and we're going to do... Let's upgrade one of our attacks to level 3, so it deals 10 damage now. I'm going to try and make a very damage-stacked deck and just kind of see what happens here. There's a campfire on that side. Not going to use it. Let's go fight a level 3 zombie. That was us drinking our potion from our talents that we bought. That's a really good starting hand, so I absolutely will take that one. I don't have the AP to use this starting hand, but I'm going to take the four APs and draw a card right there. And this could turn into 
Yeah, I mean, we one-shot it and we killed him all in one turn. That was a pretty good hand for us. That was a pretty solid hand, not gonna lie to you. I liked that hand a lot. That hand was good. Uh, we opened that treasure chest and we got Seed Dissipate Level 2. Dissipate Level 2 is much, much better than Dissipate Level 1, and that's why I wanted to wait on taking that card. I didn't want to waste an upgrade on it. Mm, there is a meta in this game. That's the nice thing about it. It gets you really thinking and gets the juices percolating. My juices percolate frequently all on their own, but that's just because I have a glandular imbalance. Uh, Skeletal Mage, level 4. We're level 2. This fight could be right, you know what to do. troublesome. Ooh, yeah, we started with a Dissipate in our hand, though, so I'll take that. Let's get 14 damage out. Get a little bit right there. He's probably going to try and Magic Missile us on the first turn. See that Dissipate right there? He tried to Concentrate to get his mana, or I'm sorry, he tried to use Concentrate to build up either mana or heal himself or draw another card, and we managed to cancel it. And then he just gets knocked the hell out. We're operating on a couple of advantages right now. We've got a really good deck. Our deck is small. It has all cards that are useful. And the more we put into the deck, the more it's going to dilute that factor. However, I'm going to take... Ooh, so we leveled up. We can take 5 HP, find an item, or take thumber, Thunderstorm. Eh, we'll find an item. Uh, we won't know what that is until we die or start a new dungeon or whatever, though. So, Oh, it was Plate Mail Armor of the Storm. So that's pretty cool. I don't think we had that before. So I guess it auto-equips it. Uh, we've got wares here. Wares? There's. Uh, there's two spells here. Neither of them are intrinsically interesting to me. Uh, it's just a healing spell. And Concentrate allows you to draw a card, heal 6 HP, or deal 5 damage. I do like diverse cards like this because they're more useful than cards that flat out just do one thing. But in general, uh, we've got a Hammer of Regeneration. Recover 2 HP at the start of every round. Yeah, I'm going to take that. That sounds good. We've got a little bit of coin left. So technically we could get a little bit of Frost buffs, but don't have the cash for it right now. I'm going to have to wait till Water Staff can conjure me a little bit more money. A Dissipate 2. I will take Dissipate 2, actually, because most of the bosses in this game tend to be pretty magic-heavy, right, you know and being able to deny them the ability to cast spells at you is uber-sweet. Alright, so there's 10 damage right there. I'm going to improvise, put up block 7. That's going to take us to block 9. We're going to draw another improvise, which is going to put us up to block 16, I guess. So there it is. We've blocked a decent amount. We have a Dissipate in our hand right now, which is all bad for a mage. So hopefully, he will cast something shortly that will allow us to just annihilate him. And there it was. He cast Concentrate. We killed him with the Dissipate. Bim, bam, bam. The fight is won. Let me know if I'm moving too fast for you in this series. But it's one of those games that, like, it's not complicated, but at the same time, I don't want to sit too long and explain what every single card does ad nauseum. I never know if I'm giving you enough information. We're up against an Undead Rogue. We've got attack three. I'm going to play that right now. We play defend twice because we drew a defend after playing that defend, so that puts us at four armor. We've got an attack seven right there. I'm going to wait till I actively take damage to use life, rain, or life train. It seems like a waste to... It seems like a waste to me to use it when I don't have any health missing. So there you go. Now would be the time that we want to play life train. Twelve damage out. We don't have the AP to play that. We don't have the ability to seal the deal and kill him in one turn, so I'm going to take block 7 and do the safe choice. This attack will do roughly 14 damage, 12 damage in there somewhere. And unless if it was going to one-shot him, I would have played the AP so that I could kill him on this turn without taking damage, but I feel like I've explained myself well enough right now. What do you think about this game? I do like this game a lot. This game, I don't know what itches it scratches for me, but I've been playing it a ton. Wow, look, this guy's AP economy is just absurd. This guy's got tons of AP. <laughs> Good lordy, sweet lordy. All right, so I'm going to play that. I'm going to kick that out of my hand because he's not going to use any magic anyways. I'm going to use charge up to get four AP and another card. There's a hit right there. Take a block seven off that improvise as opposed to the three APs of the four damage. And we're just going to wait to see what he does. Hopefully we can minimize some of the pain he's been dishing out. I can finish this off right here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, we've defeated the Undead Rogue. That's a level up, so it's going to restore all of our HP. We can eliminate a card from our deck. We can find an item. We can get a Defend Level 1, or we can get another Improvise. I say find an item. Look at this. I'm going to find an item. That seems good. we got a Vampire Bat over there. We've got we the go. Plate Mail Armor of the Storm, which was actually the item that was in the shop over there. Gain Mana, Arcane Plate Mail, Armor of the Hurricane. 13 more HP. Gain one mana when you play a magic card. Start each battle with a temporary Thunder Slam card. Okay, I'm going to mulligan that one because I don't think the bat's going to be that big of an issue anyways. And we're just going to get rid of him on the first turn because we've leveled up. That's yeah, a scrub fight now. 
That's a scrub fight. In this game, just like I'm sure I've either put has-been heroes up at this point, uh, as with has-been heroes, you do want to clear the entire map when you play this game, so keep that in mind. That's a big bursty first turn, so I'll take that. We'll finish him off with the four damage from the improvise right there to get that nailed out very quickly. Oh, it has been heroes. Same thing. You want to clear out as many nodes as you can before you get to the boss fights. Otherwise, it's going to be rough for you. I'm going to start this battle. I'm going to charge up. I'm going to take the four and draw one. Sure. And I'm going to give myself a 14 shield. He's going to deal seven right there with a the power strike, so we just eliminated a crit, which is fantastic. Uh, he's going to come out with a couple more attacks, but unfortunately, it's just not going to be enough. We're sitting on six shield right now. He's got two HP. This fight should be over shortly, so don't uh, get yourself all unbuckled. Ah, we got him with a dissipate because he tried to concentrate. Concentration is not something we appreciate in this game. Not something we appreciate. Don't do it. But yeah, I like this game. It seems as though a lot of the art has been upscaled from a different platform, and that's what's kind of led me to believe maybe it was a mobile game or something like that. Don't quote me on that because I don't know if that's the truth. But I'm just saying it seems to me as though the art has been upscaled from a smaller resolution, and maybe that's just because, I don't know. Let me take a look here. Yeah, full screen, fast mode, so... Yep, yep, it looks like it's been upscaled to me from like a 1280 by 720 or something like that. I like that hand. Yeah, let's start with this hand. That hand seems mighty fine to me. I'm gonna draw two cards. Eh. Play the 10 damage right now, play the 3 damage right there. We've got Dissipate in our hand, but he just hit us with a Poison Sting, so we've now got Poison 3 on us. So when we play a card... It's going to start hurting. He just played web, which forces me to get rid of something. Dissipate's not going to come in on this fight, so I'll throw away Dissipate. All these spiders have the nasty habit of... Spiders have the nasty habit of double playing web some turns and just wiping out your entire hand and making you just want to cry. I'm going to throw out the defend, I guess. Throw out an improvise, I guess. Exactly like that right there. Perfect example. Uh, that is one of my complaints about the game. I think there are too many items and there's too many abilities in this game that completely like delete your opponent's entire hand and just don't allow them to play in general i'm not a big fan of mechanics like that i feel like a player should be able to play like that's i don't know hand denial decks and stuff like that i find to be incredibly obnoxious because you're not only winning the game but you're not even allowing the opponent to play which is not fun in general if i made a card game i would never have a mechanic like that because i want both players to feel like they have agency and they actually get to react and play things but uh, in this game, it's very easy to have, like, half of your hand deleted in one turn and just be like, okay. And it doesn't cost them anything to do it. They just got a good hand that allowed them to do that. And you're like, all right, well, I guess that's that. Uh, I like that hand. That hand's not terrible. Kind of regretting I didn't take the three AP boost because I didn't know our deck was going to pan out like this. But, you know, I can live with it. That's a skeletal whatever the shit he is. Not bad. I'm going to throw that away because I don't think he's going to use magic. Ow, my face. Well, that was a nasty turn. Why would you do that to me? I'm going to get 5 HP and some mana back, and then I'm going to whittle you down with 3 damage attacks. Just death by a thousand cuts. Death by a thousand cuts is what happens at Disneyland, dude. Everybody's fuck. Oh, my God. Everybody is cutting in line at Disneyland, and I just want to die when it happens. It's death by a thousand cuts. Death by a thousand cuts. I don't know why so many people don't understand how a line works, but apparently in some places lines aren't things, and you just ignore them. So, the Stone Altar, if you claim its gift, enemies are permanently weak, but you get two permanent penance cards that clog up your deck. So what this does is it gives everybody weakened one, which lowers their damage permanently. And penance is a card that doesn't do anything. It's just a card that can come up in your hand, and when you play it, nothing happens, and it just eats up your deck economy. I'm going to say no thanks to that, because I actually feel like we're running a pretty good, pretty well-trimmed deck at the moment. Ooh, I got a Shoulder Pad of the Serpent. Adds one to poison damage. What do you have? You got Gloves, Hammer of Regeneration, which does 3 damage, 2 HP at the start of the round, damage plus 3. Yeah. Go for it. Why not? We could also afford Mana Drain, 6 physical damage, or we could take another Power Strike. I'll take a Power Strike. That sounds good. And with that, we are on the Skeleton Champion. Now, this is our first run. This is a game that you are meant to lose. You are supposed to lose in this game, so if you lose, don't get upset about it. Like, you're supposed to lose because you come back and you get stronger the next time around. I don't think I can play any of those right now. I'm going to play Defend. I've got Dissipate just in case he tries to play a spell. I'm going to play both of those as shields and blocks. 
I'm gonna use that to draw a card, and that's gonna give us life drain, which is pretty good for next turn. I tend to like to stack cards that give me health back while dealing damage. Uh, kind of like a, a, a Witch Knight, or kind of like a Death Knight type gameplay. We haven't taken any damage yet, so I'm just gonna sit on what I have for right now. I have an assumption that eventually he will play a spell, because he has a lot of... Ooh. Good god. Okay, so this dude's got options. Let's go and play that. I'm going to throw out the Dissipate for right now because it hasn't been useful yet. Okay, Improvise. He's going to play Defense. He's going to Concentrate. He keeps pulling those Life Drain level 3s we're going to lose just by default. And there's nothing we can do about that. 1 AP right there. Fix him with the Power Strike. I don't think we're coming out on top in this one. I just don't see it happening. Oh, we got him with a Dissipate. Cool. And there it is. Uh, you're not supposed to win at this game, basically. And so let's take a look at our fame. We got 195. And so that should afford us a couple of little level ups here. I know exactly what I'm going to spend these on. I better study uh, this is the talent skills. tree that you have. You can actually take these. And you can give yourself 9 additional HP. And then you'll start with 12. And then you'll start with 15 if you work in that direction. Uh, you can make it so that you have a better chance to get potions. And a better chance of a potion heal. You can get a deck modifier, so each one of these is actually for a different class on each side. These are class modifiers, so they change the way your deck starts out. So if you're playing as like a knight, you can change a defense card into a offense card, and vice versa. I'm going to go for extra HP, because actually I've played this game a bit. I know how to win a bit, and the extra HP is really helpful. And I would recommend you take the HP boosts first, because as you saw in that last fight, we were getting nailed down by like 13 damage hits every single turn, and HP is the best way to get around that. Uh, this time around, we're going to play a different class, but that's going to be our time for the day. I hope you enjoyed this title. It's called Monster Slayers. You can check it out down below. I'm pretty sure it's like $4 or $8 or something like that. I've got a Steam link for you down below. If this is the sort of thing that you wanted to check out, be sure to do so. My name is Splattercat. What I do here on the internet is I show off indie games all day, every day. I try to give you about an hour, hour and a half of gameplay, between 30 minutes to an hour and a half of uncut gameplay, so that you can figure out if the game is something that you yourself want to invest your time, your patience, and most importantly, your money into. That's what I've always done here. That's what I like doing. That's what I'm going to keep on doing. Thanks for stopping on in, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.